Hello guys, welcome back. One of my subscribers actually asked me to create a video about SQL Lite and how we can use that with LangChain. So in this video, I will go through the SQL chain example. By the way, in LangChain, there is already a SQL database agent. There is a Spark SQL agent and different other things related to SQL. But in this video specifically, I will go through the SQL chain example. What I will do first is download a SQL file and convert that into the database using SQL Lite. And then we will use that to go through this particular notebook. As you can see here, when we go through the documentation, there is just mentioned about this chinook.db and there is a link how you can convert the SQL file into the database. But it seems that many of you are getting confused. I will show step by step how you can download the SQL file how you can convert that into the DB and upload that into the Google Colab, go through the notebook. Let's get started. Okay, so now I am on the Google Colab notebook and we will go through the SQL chain example, as I said before. This example demonstrates the use of SQL database chain for answering questions over a database, right? So under the hood, how LangChain works is it uses the SQL alchemy to connect to the SQL databases. And in this particular example, we will be using SQL Lite and the example Chinook database. First thing first, we need to set up the environment as always. You need to install the necessary packages that is LangChain, Watermark and OpenAI. And the Watermark because you can just have some kind of cool things out of it as, as shown in the screen. And now we import all the necessary things and we need to have the OpenAI API key. Go to this link and once you are done, we are good to go. What do we do now? We need to first import the necessary classes from LangChain and there we go. And now here is the thing, right? There is chinook.db. But if we go to this here, that if we go to the link here, it takes us to the link where we can download the SQL file. But there is no .db. Many of you actually got confused how to create that DB file. So for that, we are going to use the SQL Lite. And when you install Python on your local machine, SQL Lite is already downloaded. So you don't need to download again. What we can do, by the way, if you just want to see what is inside this SQL file, you can just click this and it opens here. So here are different SQL statements to create the tables, to drop the tables, to insert the data into the table and all these things. So we are going to create a database out of this SQL file. How we can download this and the recommended way is you can just right click this and copy link address. Then you can go to your terminal and just type wget and paste the command. If you type enter, it is downloaded. Now if you do ls, there is already the files that I have downloaded before. As you can see here, there is already a chinook db, there is chinook sqlite sql and dot one because I Overwrite that file, right? So, how you can create this? Just to show you, let me remove this chinook.db as well as this chinook sqlite.1. So, now if we go here, we just have one file that we just downloaded, right? So, how can we create the database out of this SQL file? First, make sure that you have SQLite installed, right? Let me clear the screen. If you type SQLite 3 in the terminal and enter, if it shows something like this, what you are seeing in the screen, then you have SQLite, right? So to quit, you can just type dot quit. But now we need to create the database. For that, just type SQLite 3 and give the name of the database you want to create. And then a smaller sign and give the name of the SQL file. So if I run this command now, depending upon your machine, it will take some time, but just fraction of seconds. Now we have the dot db being created now if i do ls yeah there is chinook.db so that is how quickly you can create a database out of dot sql file using sql lite now we will upload this chinook db to our google collab for that now we need to go to the google collab on the left side on the on this folder icon you now there is this upload icon if you click the upload you can just choose this chinook db and open and it will take some time then it is uploaded in your Google Colab. Now we can use this particular database in our notebook. Okay, now we have our .db, the database in our Google Colab. Now we can run this particular cell where we are showing the path 
to the SQL DB path is contained in Chinook DB. And the DB is SQL database dot from URI and we are passing that particular link or the path. And there is the large language model open AI. Here we can just type return equals to true so that for data sensitive projects, you can specify that in SQL database chain. Initialization to directly return the output of the SQL query without any additional formatting. So that is how it works. So now we can just pass this command here. And if we run how many employees are there, then it is going to provide us the answer by going through the SQL database chain. As you can see here, it creates a new, new chain. How many employees are there? Select count all from employees and it count and it provides the answer to us. We provided the natural language format question. By the way, there is many things going here. I explained this in my previous use case video also. Here, first it knows that it needs to go through that particular database, particular table, and then it needs to also know that we, we are counting how many employees are there. It knows the particular SQL statement select count all from employees. It has its SQL result being printed out. And then again, it formatted that to the natural language. So there are actually four or five different steps being going inside that particular chain. Now we have our answer here. Okay, now what next, right? We can also use the query checker with this particular SQL chain. So sometimes the large language or the language model generates invalid SQL with small mistakes that can be self-corrected using the use query checker equals to true. So if I just pass the same command but with query checker equals to true, if we run this command and then we run DB checker, how many albums by Aerosmith, right? So when I run this, it says that entering our SQL database chain, how many albums by this, select count all from album where artist ID equals to three, one, and one album by this, finish chain, one album by this. It depends how, what kind of query you want to run, but it actually knows here, I just said how many albums by this, right? But then here it says select count all from album where artist ID equals to three and it provided us the answer. So the good part is always use query checker equals to true if you want the large language model not to make any mistakes. So now what next again, right? Because there are many ways how you can implement and SQL being the most common language because it is used by machine learning engineer, data engineer, data analyst, business analyst, and all the different peoples, right? So it's kind of human language also because you should select all from table. So that is kind of human language. And that is why this SQL is being quite mostly used in the large language model also because both of those kind of work similar because it, they are both kind of natural language way, right? Now we can actually customize our prompt or how we can do that. You can also customize the prompt that is used. Here is the example prompting to understand that foo bar is same as employee table. So that is how we can customize the prompt. Saying that, okay, instead of saying employee table, we can say that foo bar is same as employee table. So how we can achieve that? First, we need to import the prompt template and here is the default prompt we provided. And here is only use the following tables and table info and if someone asks for the table foo bar, they really mean the employee table. So that is how you can customize the prompt. And now we have the prompt, prompt template and we pass the input variable, input table info and dialect and the default template. So when we run this now, now we can create the SQL database chain again, passing that particular prompt and we can say how many employees are there in the foo bar table because there is no foo bar table, right? We have the employee table, but we have customized our prompt. As it says here, there are eight employees in the foo bar table, but it is going through that particular employee table. That's really good, right? Okay, so now you might be thinking that, okay, I want to know the intermediate steps. So that is also quite simple. What you need to pass is return intermediate steps equals to true. I have already explained this in my previous video also, but if you run this command, how many employees are there in the foo bar table and we can just pass the result and then intermediate steps. It will go through that particular chain. How many employees are there? It will do the same thing again and it will provide us the answer. And this is the intermediate steps it is being provided here, right? There are eight employees in the foo bar table and all these things. But one thing what you need to be thinking here is that when you run these intermediate steps, here you don't 
run db dot underscore chain dot run because when you run before it is dot run but if you want to have the intermediate results you need to store that in a different variable so that we can take that particular intermediate steps from that particular result there is also a new thing called choosing how to limit the number of rows returned right in sql if you are familiar with sql i hope you are you can provide the limit query right limit and then you can say 10 20 50 something like that but in this particular thing also there is the top k parameter which defaults to 10 but you can actually provide it by saying top k equals to 3 if i provide the top k equals to 3 and if I run this particular chain, what are some example tracks by composer Johann Sebastian Batch, right? So then it went through that particular chain. Here is the example and then it provides us the three different answers. If you can see here, there are the three different answers being provided. So yeah, that's how simply you can customize your SQL chain in your own way, depending upon your use case. Okay, there are many other examples also how you can implement. I will not make this video long, but here all the information is provided in the notebook. We can even have, for example, let's say you're adding example rows from each table and you can just go through the notebook because here we can just say, okay, use the tables track and based on that, provide information and something like that. And here you can also have the custom table information. And even if you want to go one step further, you can also have the SQL database sequential chain because they say that you have two different tables and you want to do the comparison or you need to query from two different tables, right? So what you can do is create a database sequential chain. Here, as you can see here, uh, the chain needs to go through the two different tables. And once it knows that it needs to go through the two different tables, then it will do the thing that it needs to do and provide off the information. Yeah, that's how it works with the SQL Lite. And there are actually, as I said before, different SQL chains, Spark SQL as, as, a, as well as the SQL database agents in the LangChain documentation. Please go through the documentation. I hope you like this video. If yes, give thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.